Summer Solstice Virtual. I've got the sun in my eyes and the music in my mind. Okay, we're back in our famous green room here at uh, Summer Solstice Virtual Party Headquarters. Yeah, thank you so much, Paul, for an amazing set. Thank you. Yeah, I loved it. Loved what did it. you What did you find different this year to last year? Um, I think it was better with a few people around. You know, I mean, last year it was me and two other people. I think in there really, it was yeah. like a ghost town in there. But. Um, Today, yeah, there, there was atmosphere there. There was people running around it. It looked lively again. There looked hope. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I wasn't, didn't have an OB on the dance floor, yeah, it was hope. Yeah, it was hope. So tell me now. Obviously, with the way that the country, the world has been with this yeah. pandemic, yeah. Um, how have you been coping? I've been all right because I've got myself the new kit at home, and I sort of sign myself up for playing virtual all over the world. Yeah. Um, Italy, France, all these people coming through an agent. I've got Karen Scargill. And um, she was going, oh, can you do a mix for these people there in Greece? Can you do? Yeah. Great. So it was, you know, putting a mix together, sending them off. I did get lazy towards the end, repeated a few of the mixes. But, and then obviously with the radio, that keeps you sane doing the radio, as you know, keeps, keeps you sane doing two hours of radio a week yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, I also do a mix for um, Bully every now and then under the North Lane banner, but I'm, I've, I've been doing something all the time. I've been playing pubs where they all sit down and things like that, you know, which is obviously very difficult to keep telling people to sit down, you know, I'm getting used to that now, you know, and um, yeah, but there's so much great new music coming out and I think there's more and more music being produced because of the lockdown, more and more people are shoving out tunes, it seems some people are releasing them every week. So, but there's more strings to your bow than just DJing, isn't there? Yeah, it's selling records. Selling records and property. Um, so I'm always busy, always stressed out. Um, I've got 34,000 records that I sell on two different sites, going by eBay and things like that. Um, just about to collect another 30,000. I get five, 600 downloads a week as well to go through. As you know, it's, it's quite painful. Some of them are really painful, but you tend to know what to look like. You look for now, you get the tropical disco, you get the midnight riots come through, you get defected. Oh, lovely, a nice little package here. So you've got stuff to play all the time. Yeah. So, so your your journey into the music industry, where did that start? It started in 77, all by accident. I was always, um, I always bought records when I was at school. I'd done school disco a couple of times. Um, we played Motown and Philly, the school disco. The girls are like, oh, love it, he's playing the Detroit Spinners, he's playing uh, the Three Degrees, oh, lovely, we love him, the stylistics. It's what was classed as girly music then, wasn't it? Well, it was, yeah, but yeah. it was our music, and yeah, it, it's yeah. something, um, you know, I used to go about with a soul boy as well, which helped. I'd, from about 11 years old, I went out with the guy, so, um, and he was the only, we had three black guys, I think, at school, that was it. You know, so I took a lot of flack, I stood back to back with him all the time where there was abuse and things like that. And um, yeah, I come out of school and we started going clubbing. We, we, we went to all the trendy clubs, uh, the in place in them days it was in Brighton. And um, I bought imports. We used to go down a um, little basement and buy imports when they used to come in. And they, they were a pound, a bit more expensive than the WH Smith seven inches. <laughs> And then I got into it, I had this big collection, all the boys come around, oh, you got this week, I've got a new Blackbirds album, it's fantastic. Um, I've got a new Roy Ayers singles, oh, let's have a listen, George McRae, let's have a listen, I played it to him. Suddenly went to an opening night of a place called Seven Stars, a local boy was DJing, he was a bit of a mobile DJ, and he was playing, and nobody would dance. And then he was going, why aren't you lot dancing to him? And they went, to George. And uh, he went, oh, fair enough. They went, let Clarky go up and have a go. And I went, no, nah, I don't know what to do. And they went, no, oh, no, go on, let him have a go. So I queued the record up. Suddenly there was 50 people on the floor, jumping up and down. I played eight records, they didn't come off the floor. 11 o'clock, it finished. The governor came up to me and went, we want you to work here. You know, it's £2.50 for the night, <laughs> or £5 if you do the whole lot. And the other guy went, well, it's my night. And I went, yeah, me and you were split. After three weeks, he just said, look, I'm fed up with this. You know, your mates won't refuse to die. I'll play the same record as you. 
they won't dance when I'm on. The moment you get up, they all pile forward. It, it, it's a plot. I said, it's nothing to do with me. So it went from there, and the place we used to go to was called the In Place, which is the main place on the seafront. Went there the one night, and the DJ said to me, oh, can I have a word with you at the end of the night? And I went, yeah, go on, Laurie, have a word. He went, I want you to, I'm, I'm moving over the road to the, to the posh club over the road. Can you take up the residence here? And I went with me, and he went seven nights a week. I went, I can't do that. He went, well, somebody can help you, surely. And I went, all right, I don't want to work Saturday, though, because I go to the Lacey on Saturday, so I'm not working Saturday nights. And they went, okay. So I'll give another guy the Saturday nights, and I had the Sunday off, I think, because there was another thing going on down the road. And I worked five nights a week at 7.50 a night. Then it had gone to, which was a um, nice little pay packet. But in them days, residencies were the big thing. Everybody had residences, yeah. 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 Of us all. Yeah. Um, yeah. From then, I went on to the Salisbury Hotel. They, helped, they doubled my money and said, will you come along the road? And I went, yeah, I didn't want to do that. I spoke to the owner and I said, look, I've been offered double the money of going away. He went, we'll go then. These people come here because of the club, not the, D the DJ. And I went, okay. So I left and everybody come with me. I've got to ask you this question as well. Yeah, go on. You wear some Leary shirts. I've been asked to no, ask you this question. No. And I've been asked to ask you where you get them from. Well, I did originally shop at Claudio Lugli online which is an Italian designer, big shops in London. But then Richard Brutledge, you know Richard Brutledge? Yes, he yes. runs all the scenes up yeah. in the armor. I'm going to open a shop. I went, okay. So he started sending me all these pictures of the shop. Yeah. Things he if you wear this at a gig, I'll send it for, for you for nothing. He goes down to Hoxton, buys all his stock. I, I think he pays a lot of money for it, but he doesn't sell it at a lot of money. So I've invited a thousand people on Facebook and that to join his thing. He's got a lot of customers. He said, anything you want, it's free. So I phoned him up, I go, like that one? Yeah, send the post tomorrow. So it's a good old boy, Richard. Never be rich, but you know, <laughs> I'll wear the shirt, take a picture of it, even coats, yeah. jackets, things like that. Take the picture of it, send it up to him, he puts it all over the website, he's happy. Now, I worked with Richard when he, he started Soul Village. Yeah. Back yeah. in, uh, back in uh, 2000, I think, yeah. 2001 or something like that. Now, your musical influences, uh, what, what is your preference in music? So I know you've now gone, and you, you, you're into a lot of like the edits and, edits and remixes. And spin ups and things yeah, like that, and, yeah. and the Italians and the, um, uh, the Greeks and the French and things like that. Of all, yeah. you know, I speak, to, I speak to a lot of them all week, you know, and they're, oh, oh, what about this track? Do you know this track? Yeah, I know that one. Nature's Own. And they go, Wow, how do you know these things? I went with well, my records back in the day. And every now and then we, we sit and we hear a record and we go, what's this one? I can't think what this is. I got one the other day and it was, um, Harold, it sounded like One Way and I thought it's a one way track, it's one way. Harold Melvin, Sharon Page, Tonight's the Night. Remember that one? Yes. There's an edit of that wow. under, a, under an assumed name. Right. I, to, I kept losing it though, Jones, so I've, I've labelled it now One Way in brackets on it. So I just, what's that one way track? That's it. I was going to play that tonight, but um, that, that's my influences. And I do like the tough stuff, like the Mike Dunn's and the things like that. So I play Terry Hunter tracks, Mike, yeah. Mike Dunn, um, Louis Vega tracks. Louis Vega's gone a bit jazzy now, so that's not always my thing. Packer, um, Joey Negroes, all them sort of things, really. I try and mix them all up. Do you find that the change in music, do you, do you embrace... Because I know I, I hear sometimes people go, oh, it's another edit, oh, it's another mix, oh, it's a, why can't you play the original? And I think to myself sometimes music's got to move on. The originals worked back in the day, and this is what people don't get. You're now playing, hopefully most of the time, to a younger crowd. Yeah. Um, I played a venue last night, um, and my daughter had 10 of her mates in there. So, you, you know, you automatically yeah. look, you know, she's 24, 25, and you automatically look and you think, oh, Ask me for that all night. They, they don't. They loved it, but you've got to tweak things in there. Yeah. The boogie oogie oogie and a bit of car wash spinning in there. Is it love you're after? Uh, respect them sort of things. And they yeah. go, wow. Stop clapping their hands. Bit of um, uh, Chuck Khan thing. I was spanning there last night. Um, and they and they go clapping and yeah, that's brilliant. Some somebody. I, I was at a party yesterday yesterday morning, a funeral in fact, from a brother, and. Um, one of my cousins was there and they said, they can't believe that the kids are like 17, 18, they can't, can't believe 
you know, Uncle Paul's a DJ, yeah, but he's so good, but he's so old, but he's brilliant. <laughs> I know, I know. It's the same with, you know, my, my, my grandchildren. And they, they look at me and they'll go, oh, we saw pictures of you. We've seen you here and seen you there. Because we are old to them. Yes, absolutely. And we're doing what... We should be they, doing the gardening now. Our absolutely, race, yeah. Doing the we're doing what young people do. Yeah. Because to them, a DJ or in the business is a young person, yeah, absolutely. Not, not us. Yeah, you can, know. Who can dance and dance and waddle. That's, yeah, that's um, right. Yeah, do a fat Freddy yeah. <laughs> run around that place. What have you got lined up for the future? You, you do quite a bit of stuff on, in, in Brighton. You've got a, a beach party coming up as well, haven't you? October, that's when Richard comes down. Richard puts his stall out. So, um, fingers crossed that's going to happen. Um, 400 people, a lot of liquid spirit stuff coming up. Um, Danny Talbot. Um, he does well, and, and Bob Masters back in the game. We've got our beef for next year. Yeah, yeah. Um, completely sold out in two days, 800 wow. people, and that is just one hell of an event. It, it's fantastic. Uh, what is your your plans now? Other than you know your DJing, you've got your property, you've got your record. What is the what's your name? Of your record um, store? Music Meltdown, which is the same as the ticket site as well, which I sell. The tickets from, but I don't, I don't sell under the name Music Out. I just use like the Discord's thing and yeah. another company called I Have It, which um, sell a lot of stuff, a lot of back bottom end stuff. Um, I don't know. I can't see. Stop thinking, you. Well, fingers crossed. You know, it, it, it. We're in an industry, I think, where I think we've been left behind with all this going on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I can't get my head round. Some of the decisions that have been made. Yeah. Places that can have 60, 70,000 people, yet you can't dance around your table with six. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. No, surely they don't want nightclubs to open. That's, that's what that's, it is. That, that is. That, that is the way I think it's looking. You know, you can go to a garden party, but you're not allowed to dance outside. Yeah. You know, we had it at the Boysdale. No singing, no dancing. So, it, it, you know, it doesn't make sense when. As they say, it's good for one but not the other. Well, I, I've done an event uh, at the Oso on the Brighton Beach, which I, I do every now and then on a Sunday down there. And there's all the front people in front of me all jumping about and dancing because it does. I started it off playing chill out and things like that, but there's only so many times you can play soul to soul and them sort of things, yeah, you know, yeah, just for people to yeah, tap their feet. And after yeah. a while, you're just thinking, you need to this is a representation of me. This is not no. me. I'm, I don't mind warming up with this stuff, and I don't mind doing a four-hour set. But it's got a build, and then it's got to go yeah, into to take it something somewhere. else. But I can't move it that direction because they will jump up and start dancing. And in the end, I thought I've got to do it that way, you know, because if people come down to see me and just think, oh, "Clark, is what, what's Clark you doing this for?" So I done that. So the bouncer stood around, stopped everybody from dancing. I turned around me, and in the street above, everybody's dancing. You can't stop them. So and that's what people so are saying. I'm going to go, I'm going to walk up there on, on the esplanade dance. and dance in the street because I'm allowed to do it. Yeah. So um, that's anyway, the thing. Paul, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much, James. Wonderful set, and uh, thank no you. doubt we will be seeing you in front of a crowd. Absolutely. In the near future, hopefully. Um, and all the best in what you're doing in the future. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you.